This is Professor Pell, and this is Calculus Chapter Three, uh, Chapter Two, Section Three: The Derivative of the Rate of Change in Higher Order Derivatives. So, a, uh, the position of a particle is given by the following equation in terms of uh, t seconds, and the s is measured in meters. So, determine the velocity at time t. So, the first derivative of position is the velocity. So, the velocity in this case is three t squared. Uh, minus 12t to the first plus 9. So B says determine the velocity at 2 seconds and at 4 seconds. Okay, so B, we want the velocity at uh, 2 seconds and we want the velocity at 4 seconds. So that's uh, 3 times 2 to the second power minus 12 times 2 plus 9. And let's see here, um, three times four to the second power minus 12 times four plus nine. Okay, follow the order of operations. Exponents multiply, then add. So the first one will give you negative three. The second one will give you nine. And these are velocities, so they're in meters per second. So at some point, you're moving forwards 9 meters per second. and one point, you're moving backwards 3 meters per second, because this is a forwards and backwards uh, particle of movement. It's not a free fall type problem. OK, C, determine when the particle is at rest. OK, so if you're at rest, that means your velocity is nothing. You're not moving. OK, so C, 0 equals 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. So I can do uh, factoring here. I can factor out a 3. t squared minus 4t plus 3. Then we can do quad form factoring. So we got t and t. So that's 1 times 3 is 3, which is prime. So the only factors are 1 and 3 which both are negative to, mul to add to, to multiply to 3 and they add to negative 4. So 3 does not equal 0, t minus 1 equals 0, and t minus 3 is 0. So t equals 1 and t equals 3. So those are the points in time when I'm at rest, which means I'm changing directions at that point. So I go a direction, I stop at these, at these points, and I turn around and go the other way, which is at 1 second and at 3 seconds. You can see from my picture I've drawn here, at one second and three seconds, I've changed directions. Okay, so um, D determine when the particle is moving forward, uh, should be forward uh, or back and uh, and backwards. Okay. So D, so I'm going to set up the intervals of 0 to 1, from 1 to 3, and 3 to infinity. And the question is, how did I arrive at these intervals? Well, I knew the time periods were 1 and 3 from the previous problem. I need to know when I'm at rest. I'm at rest at 1 and 3. And I have to start at 0 because I can't go negative in time. I have to start at some point, and it goes to infinity because it never said anything about stopping. Okay, so how do I get forwards versus backwards? Well, the velocity function is v of t equals three uh, t squared minus twelve t plus nine. Right. Simply plug in a value. So in this interval right here is a 0.5, is it not? Okay, so if I plug in 0.5 into the equation, what happens? Okay, you're going to get a positive value when you plug that into here, right? So do V of 0.5, uh, V of 0.5, you get a positive value, right? Because that's going to give you 9 there. Half of 12 will be negative 6, right? And that gives you a positive value. So you are moving forward in the first interval because when you plug it into the velocity function, you get a positive number. 
Likewise, take any number in the next interval from 1 to 3, but not 1 or 3, because at 1 and 3, I'm at rest. So 2 is in that interval, isn't it? Plug in 2. Okay. Well, that's going to give you a negative outcome when you do V of 2. So I therefore, I'm moving backwards. And plug any number into the next one, 3 to infinity. Plug in any number, so do V of 4 or V of 5, V of 6, right? That's going to give you a um, positive outcome. So you're moving forward in that last interval. All right, E says, determine when the total distance traveled by the particle during the first five seconds. Okay, so using these intervals, I want to go for five seconds, where did I move? So from F, sorry, not F1. S1 to S0, I was moving forward some kind of distance, but I wanted an absolute value because I don't want a negative answer. So from F, uh, S, I'm sorry, I keep using F, S3 to S1, I was moving backwards, so I want the absolute value of that answer. And the next, uh, S5 to S3. Well, how did I get five? Well, it said the first five seconds, so I don't go to infinity. Okay. So I'm subtracting one position for another to get the actual distances. So when I subtract these, I'm going to get four meters in the first one. I'm going to get negative four meters in the second one, and I'm going to get 20 meters in the third one. But these are all absolute value because I want distance. Okay, so I get a total of 28 meters. So essentially, take your position function, right, which is s of t equals t to the third power minus 6t squared plus 9t, okay, and plug in 1, plug in 0, and subtract those two values. That'll get your displacement or change in position. But that position can be backwards or forwards, but I only want the total distance, which, which measured as only positive. Okay, F, determine uh, the acceleration of the particle at t seconds and at 4 seconds. Okay. So let's scroll down a little bit here. So you can see in my picture uh, so far that the forwards and backwards, I've broken up on the graph with the one second and the three second. And then out here is, of course, infinity. So it keeps going for our three different intervals. And you can clearly see um, that the velocity is positive, then the velocity is negative, then the velocity is positive in the graph. Okay. All right. So F. So if V of t, our function was 3t squared minus 12t plus 9, then the acceleration is 6t minus 12. Because it's its own derivative. So it's asking for the, specifically at 4 seconds, what is the acceleration? So 6 times 4 minus 12, so that's 24 uh, minus 12 is 12 meters per second squared. Okay, lastly, G is asking, when is the particle speeding up and when is it slowing down? So first we need to ch find the change or when it's not accelerating. So 6t minus 12 equals 0, or 6t equals 12 or t equals 2 seconds. All right, so using the numbers we had before, so when it changes velocity and then where it changes acceleration, we can set up our intervals. So 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to infinity. Okay, so here's the rule of thumb. If you plug in a time period into the velocity and the acceleration, if they are both positive or both negative at the same time, you are speeding up, okay, because your velocity and acceleration go in the same direction. 
if your signs don't match, which means your velocity is negative and your acceleration is positive, or acceleration is positive and your velocity is negative, right? you get to switch those. If the signs don't match, then in fact you're slowing down because your velocity and acceleration are opposing each other. So all you need to do is the first one. So if I look at this and I plug in 0.5, which is in that interval, take any number in the interval except for 0 and 1, because it's 0 and 1, it's, at, it's, it's stopped, right? So if I plug in 0.5 into the acceleration, right? Plug that into the acceleration, what happens? Okay, well, half of 6 is 3, minus 12 is a negative answer. If I plug in 0.5 to the velocity, well, that's 9 minus 6 and a positive number. Um, hmm, that gives me a positive outcome. So that means my acceleration is negative, but my velocity is positive. They oppose each other. So in this instance, I am uh, slowing down. So consequently, you can do the math for the rest of them if you want to verify it, but you don't need to because it flip-flops. Now I'm going to be speeding up. Now I'm going to slow down. Now I'm going to speed up. And again, you can check this by picking any number in the interval. Pick a one in there, right? Okay. And if the signs are the same, so then in this case, they're both going to be negative. So they're the same sign when you plug it into acceleration and velocity. So it's speeding up. So again, if when you plug them in acceleration and velocity, if they are the same sign, it's speeding up. If they are different signs, they are slowing down. All right. Pause the video. Try the student problem for yourself. Okay, so we're jumping off a diving board. So the position function is your initial position plus the velocity initial times t minus 1 half gt squared. So in this case, I'm on a diving board. So I do have an initial height of um, 32 feet. And initial velocity, since I'm pushing off the board, I mean, it's a positive since I'm pushing myself up at 16 feet per second. And I'm on Earth, and it's in feet, so that's going to be 32 t squared. So my position function for the diver is 32 plus 16 t minus 16 t squared. OK. Uh, B, determine when the drive, uh, diver hit the water. So that means my position is zero at that point. So zero equals 32 plus 16t minus 16t squared. So I'm going to move everything to the left-hand side of the equation by adding and subtracting. So I get 16t squared minus 16t minus 32 is zero. So I'm going to take out a common factor of 16. Okay, so I think we're good there. So now I can uh, factor, quad form factor. So we have t and t. So it's 1 times 2 is just 2, or negative 2. So I need to do 1 times 2 since it's prime, and negative positive to get a negative 2 when I multiply, and a, and a positive or negative 1 when I add. Okay, so clearly 16 does not equal 0 t plus 1 equals 0, and t minus 2 equals 0. So that gives me two times of t equals negative 1 and t equals 2. But 2 is going to be our actual answer because it's asking when we uh, impact the water, right? Because essentially, we would have had to have jumped from the water up to the diving board, correct? And that time would have been negative 1. And then at the diving board is 0 time, right? And when I hit the water, is that t equals 2 seconds. So the negative doesn't make sense of the problem in this case, because we didn't leave from the ground. All right. C says determine the velocity of the diver impacts uh, at impact. OK, so that means we need the velocity. OK, so C, the derivative of the, vo of the position is velocity. So in this case, it would be, hmm. Let me think here. So 32 goes to 0, and the 16 will be 16. 
and then 16 times 2 would be negative 32 t. Okay, so we want to know when what the velocity is at impact, so that would have to be two seconds later, correct? Okay, so we want v of 2. So 16 minus 32 times 2, or 16 minus 64. Um, yeah, so that's negative 48, and that's feet per second, which makes sense. You're going down. Velocity has a direction, so it's a negative speed. Or, oh, sorry, positive speed, but negative velocity. All right, D, determine the maximum height that the diver reaches. Okay, so height is a is a question of position, but I don't know the position, so I have to use velocity because I know at, at the top, my velocity is zero. So D, zero equals 16 minus 32T. So if I add that over, 32T equals 16, thus t equals one half okay so at a half a second so pretty quickly because you don't you don't stay up in the air that long when you dive board right you've reached the top of your trajectory from diving so now i can use my position function so s of one half equals negative 16 times one half squared plus 16 times one half uh, plus 32. Okay, so let's see, negative 16. So if I square a half, I get a quarter. Half of 16 is 8 plus 32. So a quarter of 16 is negative 4 plus 38 plus 32 is 40. So I'm going to get uh, 36. So 36 feet. So I jump off the board. Half a second later, I reach the peak of my height because I can't jump that high, right? which is 36 feet in the air. Okay, so lastly, I wanna know the acceleration to jerk at any point along the interval. So that is E. Well, I knew previously that my velocity function is negative 32t plus 16, correct? So if I take the derivative, I get the acceleration, which consequently is constant at negative 32. And this is in feet, so this is feet per second squared. If I take the derivative of that, I'll get jerk, which is zero feet per second to the third power. So essentially it's constant because after the initial push or pull off the board, in this case a push, gravity always affects you the same way as a negative acceleration up and down. And there is no jerk because there's no sudden stopping or anything. I guess there would be when you hit the water, but we're not counting that, right? So when you hit the water, it'd be a sudden change in acceleration, but we're not counting that. So the interval that we're doing, uh, which is what, zero to two? All right, that is not, the water is not in that part. That is the end of this part.